welcome to a straightforward, no-nonsense, sensible car review of a straightforward, no-nonsense, sensible car. Well, you know, these things are relative, aren't they? This is a straightforward, no-nonsense, entry-level Rolls-Royce. It's the new Ghost. And in Rolls-Royce terms, that means it's still quite extravagant, if not quite so extravagant, as the Phantom. This is where, then, the Rolls-Royce lineup starts with, what is it? Well, it sits on a bespoke Rolls-Royce platform that underpins all Rolls-Royce models now, and it is a 5.5 metre long, two and a half tonne saloon with a V12 engine. But more on that in a moment. First of all, let's start inside because that's where I am. And it is quiet, isn't it? And it's also very luxurious. I mean, Rolls says that this is the, the sort of least exuberant, least extravagant car that it makes, but it's still opulent by most standards. Rolls-Royce says it, it operates in post-opulence, which means that the stitching is fairly simple. And there is one piece of leather, for example, on the, on the door that goes all the way down. It's not too intricate. It's not too elaborate. It is a bit more understated. As much as a £208,000 plus options, nearly five and a half meter, 5.6 meter long saloon car can be. But I am incredibly comfortable in the front. Fit and finish is superb everywhere. Rolls-Royce is, as you may know, owned by BMW. And there are a few hints of that. It runs uh, a BMW backed Rolls fronted um, infotainment system. And these stalks will be sort of slightly familiar if you spend time in other BMWs. But by and large, this cabin feels, as it should do, and as Rolls-Royce's nearly all do, it feels bespoke to this car. So there are some BMW systems elsewhere. But when the Ghost first came out, the Generation 1 Ghost that came out in uh, 2009, that was based on a BMW architecture. That's not the same this time round. Rolls-Royce has its own architecture that underpins all of its models from this through to the Cullinan through to the Phantom. They're all based on the same thing. Actually, a couple of models, I think the Wraith and the Coupe, are still based on the old Ghost platform and they still all run down the same platform, the same production line at Goodwood, which is weird because you've got two platforms going down the same line, which is quite, uh, I would imagine, quite a difficult thing to get done. But anyway, that's by the by. Because it's a Rolls-Royce, these are cars to be driven and to be driven in, they say. So the back is as opulent um, as the front. I'm five foot ten and I've got plenty of room behind me. I've had a, a six and a half foot uh, passenger behind me and he says he's also got loads of room back there. The seats are just as comfortable. The window space is quite nice. It's quite a high window line. These pillars are, are quite big. This B, B pillar in particular is quite big, but if you want to sit in the back and enjoy it, it's a lovely place to be. There's sort of those suicide opening uh, rear doors with automated closing. There is also now a sort of automated opening option as well, but it is an option. We'll come to a few more of those things in a minute as well, but lambs wall carpets are also an option and there are some other sort of interior features that are optional even though this car is 208 grand. This particular model with all that's on it is 308,000 pounds which is quite a lot of money. Let's talk about the structure and the hardware and what this car is like to drive because that's what I'm more interested in than anything else is, is it a pleasant car to steer? And it and it is. So it sits on this all aluminium and it is an all aluminium architecture that underpins all these cars and there are some aluminium uh, extrusions which means that in terms of picking vehicle length and vehicle wheelbase it's quite a flexible in terms of production flexible um, architecture. It's a, it's a stiff shell but it's a production flexible architecture. It runs air springs all around. It has a 6.75 litre turbocharged V12 in the front driving through an automatic gearbox and it's four-wheel drive uh, just as the Cullinan is. It's the same drivetrain effectively as uh, the Cullinan SUV and it makes 563 brake horsepower which is ample even though this car's uh, two and a half tons but and just as importantly its peak torque of more than 600 foot pounds comes in at just 600 rpm higher than idle so basically as soon as you're moving 
you can start to waft on pretty much maximum torque. And in normal driving like this, I mean, you wouldn't know it had gears. When you get on it and you get up it and you ask a bit more of it, you can you can hear the sh hear the shifts and it does shift through. Let me to quickly demonstrate if I can. And you can hear the revs rise and so on. It's not uh, an overly sonorous noise, but it's a it's a muted one and it sounds like an expensive one, which it is. Now Rolls-Royce will tell you that this engine is bespoke to Rolls-Royce. It has a Rolls-Royce part number. It's not a BMW engine put into this car, but I think you've got to figure that there are likely to be some back of room shenanigans that are shared between the two companies. And I don't think there's anything particularly wrong with that. This is a 6.75 litre V12 engine. I mean, I'm not necessarily gonna complain based on which manufacturer's stamp is on which bits. Now I do want to spend a little bit of time talking about um, the suspension of this car because this is where it's quite complicated and quite intriguing. There are air springs all around, there are bespoke dampers all around, electronically controlled, but there are no drive modes per se, you just get what you get, which is absolutely fine by me. There is active rear steer, and in terms of active anti-roll bars, whereas manufacturers like Bentley uh, have moved to a 48 volt fast acting active anti-roll bar system to really try and limit body roll as much as they can because they try to be a bit sporty. Rolls-Royce doesn't use the word sporty, it wouldn't, it wouldn't dream of it. And its body movements are longer and lower. So it makes do with a 12 volt system uh, of an active anti-roll bar and that's on the rear only. Then that matches with two cameras at the front which read the road ahead and they recognize shadows and they recognize highlights and if they think the road is about to get really bumpy they will slacken off the anti-roll bar to try and minimize body roll and as things are smooth and you and you want to turn more it'll stiffen the anti-roll bar to limit body roll this car doesn't have one at the front it has mass dampers on the top of the wishbone now what they do is the wheel hits a bump and it moves up and down as it moves over bumps and it would be doing this but then there is a mass damper so it's about two and a half kilos which pivots up and down it's mounted to the top wishbone itself and as the wishbone wants to move up the mass damper wants to keep it down and the idea is that the wishbone doesn't move up and down quite so much and therefore the cabin doesn't move up and down quite so much now what i suspect is that a lot of manufacturers don't want to do something like that because that's what they call unsprung mass it's not attached to the car it's attached to the wheel side of the suspension and the heavier that is generally the worse that is but i don't know this car's got a heavy body which is unlikely to be kicked too much by a heavy suspension system and it seems to work really well occasionally you just hear a little bit of noise as this car clonks as i think the mass dampers can they have a little bump rubber bump stops on them and they can max out and also sometimes i just as you go over bumps just get a little lateral shimmy as if the front and rear suspension are not quite talking the same language. But in terms of body control, rolling comfort, soundproofing, this car is really exceptional. It has about 100 kilos of soundproofing. A Phantom has 130 kilos, but it's not just about the amount of it. It's, it's what it is and where you put it. This car has not quite the same rolling isolation and rolling comfort of the Phantom. But Phantom buyers do not want a car that feels different necessarily to one of these, and Ghost buyers the same. Ghost buyers are a bit more understated, they're a little bit more uh, discreet, whereas Phantom buyers are quite often opulent. But what they want their Rolls Royce to feel like is largely the same. They want it to feel incredibly comfortable, they want to enjoy driving it, it wants to be a smooth drive, an easy drive, quite a rewarding drive, but also an isolated, luxurious, quiet drive and I think Rolls has once again nailed it with this car. It's really good. So, I mean some caveats about the size of the B pillar and a few things on the options list that maybe shouldn't be on the options list like lambs wool carpets. I mean I don't know I might want those as standard don't you think? Lambs wool carpets. But the new Ghost picks up from where the old Ghost left off and is just better in every respect. Really like this car. So thanks for joining us for another sensible, straightforward car review. We have more of those 
every week or thereabouts on Autocar. So if you give us a thumbs up, maybe even a subscribe, we'd appreciate it more than you realise. Thanks very much, I'll see you next time. Thank you.